<laughs> Do you want another one? Do you want another one? Yes. Give it to Do you want Let's another go. one? Let's rev it up. And here's your microphone. We've got you working, Meryl. Okay. <laughs> Where's your Golden Globe? My handler is, mm. is waving it around there. I see, As I if see. it's her own. <laughs> it's heavy, that sucker. <laughs> it is. Yeah? It is. Hi, I'm Laurel. Hi, Laurel. What a pleasure. I said, I don't even know if I can speak. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, let's anyway. Talk about, I want to talk about whether or not the idea of getting older, what does that mean to you? Why anything? are you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> we want to talk about that and what that means, if anything, to you, Meryl. <laughs> oh, God. I just feel so lucky to be alive you know uh -huh. in our business it's cruel um, the attention to how you look is cruel and unrealistic I think you know you never know uh, really the ins and outs of a, a person a personality I mean it's hard enough to know no way understand the people in your own family and uh, your your own parents but to to imagine that you know the inner life and conflicts and anxieties of a, a public person. It's very, very difficult, but it's endlessly interesting. It's what makes me want to be an actor. So, I mean, it's my great fun. Well, one thing you, uh, to combine, I, I guess what you're asking me is how to combine a, a, a very consuming career and motherhood. And this means the first ingredient is a great husband. <laughs> um, that I found many years ago, uh, 31 years ago. And I'm lucky in that way. Um, and then you have to have a lot of stamina. And then you have to have very good organizational skills. I feel like I've run a business, <laughs> even though I haven't. <laughs> Where's your daughter? She's back in the seat. You see, when you win, you get spirited away. You never see your family ever, ever again. <laughs> so if anybody sees a 15-year-old in the parking lot, it's mine. We have had so many actresses that as they've come up and I've said, what are you looking forward to most tonight meeting Meryl Streep? They're like, I'm going to find her in the bathroom. I'm going to find her at her table. That's so cool. That's really, that makes me very happy. You spoke of earlier the responsibility to someone who really existed and who people loved, not the population. Right, I didn't right, care right. so much about that, but her family. Oh, you're telling about that. You, you, that. you wanted her family didn't to. Didn't want to disappoint. Yeah, yeah. You wanted them to say you nailed it. I know. Or I you just, were true to I her spirit. I captured her. Yes, because really, really, for me, it was more like. Um, I mean, honestly, it was more uh, an homage to my own mother, who h had so many of the outsized elements of Julia's character and her joy in living and her sense of fun and mischief and being up for anything and game and not interested in whining whatsoever, you know? All those things. And I thought, oh, here's Mary. And I get to do it. <laughs> Here is Mary, your mother. Yeah. Now, are you your mother's daughter? I have a little bit of both, I think. Which is the... My, well, my mother and my father. Oh. <laughs> and my dad is, was much more of a romantic and um, a musician and a, and a little melancholy and a little dreamy and solitary. And I have all of those things, too. Did they both live to see all the good things that happened to you? Yes, yes. All the <laughs> grandchildren and, <laughs> yeah. But my mom died in uh, 2001 when this <clears throat> takes place and this film yeah. and, um, and it's opening today on her birthday. So I feel like if there's some 
wonderful serendipity at work. So was that in your mind, clearly? It's well? never far from my mind. <laughs> yeah. Hi, how are you? Thank you. A dress. <laughs> and so I opened the newspaper and I saw the advertisement for a brand new musical coming to New York called Mamma Mia. And the ad said, Ex unadulterated joy. And I thought, that's where we're going to go. We're going to go to see Mamma Mia. And they all went. And they all trooped in, they sat down. And by the end of the show, they were standing on their seats, even though I'm saying, don't stand on the seats, don't stand. On the and they're dancing and they're singing and they poured out of the st onto the street, the whole audience old people, young people, very cynical teenagers, <laughs> tourists from everywhere in the world, everybody had this same feeling of joy. And um, I thought that that's a really, really powerful thing. You have had truly an amazing year. Yeah. Uh, has it been a roller coaster for you? It has been, and um, I'm sort of uh, on the downhill slope screaming with my arms up off the... <laughs> he also kind of said that in terms of being attracted to 25 oh, to 36 year olds that was, that was weird. Well, yeah. it's just okay. a sweet spot I have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and it's biological and blah. You think he's still lovable, the yeah. wreck that he is. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I still think I am, you know, the wreck that I am. <laughs> Um, well, I thought I was thrilled, and I, I couldn't, I was surprised that they wanted me to do it, because I regularly on, am on the, the worst dress list of the whatever that guy's name is. We won't mention it. No. Um, but I'm on it every year. I have certain friends who call me up and tell me I'm on it, so. Are you serious? <laughs> are you really? Yeah. And so, so that's funny, and so you're on the worst me, dress list, and then a, there you are. It's like a, I look at it as a, uh, a validation yes. of who I am as a human being that I'm on the, the worst dress list. <laughs> you know. I think you were. I, we were walking by Notre Dame in one of the scenes and I thought, I am Notre Dame and he's my flying buttress. <laughs> I did. I did. I had that image. He'll never forgive me for that. <laughs> but he's just. Can you just say that one, so more no. yeah, one more time? He's so no. He's so. He's so. No. <laughs> he's so generous and soulful and effortlessly. There's a certain urbanity and cosmopolitan thing that's very heterosexual in a way that. It's, it's almost like another time, and it was another time. I mean, how, how Stanley achieves that sort of effortlessly and without a lot of words is amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Quick question. What is the one item that you really looking forward to getting in the fall? In the fall? Yeah. Getting in the fall? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, Pippin apples. Well, there are apples that only come, well, they only come in the fall, and they're the best apples for making apple pie. I'm telling you a really, a really treasured secret of my family. Pippin apples, they're hard to find. They were first cultivated in Brooklyn, New York, and now you can only get them in California. Well, I think you can get them in the East now. And the kids burped. <laughs> oh, oh, God. I did not have garlic. <laughs> I'm so...